Sandy Babb and welcome to my studio. I'm here today to show you a flip through of this little book and at the end of the flip through there will be a mini tutorial on how to encapsulate these wings to incorporate into your art projects. But first we're going to look at the book. This little book, I've had a lot of questions of what do you do with your nature finds? And so sometimes I simply arrange them and photograph them and I put them back in the wild where I found them. Sometimes I do collect them, especially if it's like a trip. I'll collect, um, you know, a few things to maybe bring home to commemorate the trip. And um, this was, the things in this book were used from our last camping trip. And um, I had just picked up a few random things, and since I had had that question, I had this sort of project in mind and thought I would show you um, how I incorporated those things. So I'm going to insert a picture um, of the finds and um, here. And then I will go on to the flip through. Okay. So this is a six by six book and it is about an inch thick. And uh, my finds were some snail shells, a little portion of a crawdad, his tail was gone. Um, just his little exoskeleton was left. And another little half of a mussel shell, a very tatty um, luna moth, her bottom, I'm just calling it her, I really don't know if it's a boy or girl, but I'm saying her. Uh, bottom wings were really tatty. The long pieces were broke off. She was in the edge of the water, pretty almost see-through. Um, I found a piece of a bone, and I'm pretty sure this is a cow bone because there's cattle in that area. Pretty sure that's what that is. And some leaves and some stones from the creek and a rusty tin lid that was from um, the campfire ring. There was just like this little rusty tin lid. And so those were the sort of little things that I found. So this is the journal. I used a piece of handmade paper that I just inked to make myself a cover and a rounded spine that would fit to the curvature of the bone. I have made these butterfly, or these are moth, these are not butterfly, but you can do butterflies with this. This is These moth wings are encapsulated, and I've used them as charms on the outside edge of my book, but you could use these as jewelry components to do necklaces or earrings or something like that, or you could use them for book jewelry. And um, to the spine, I have added my bone and some glass beads and my wings and I have added some collage and stitch and I wanted to use a lot of copper and bronze color in this um, in the kind of rusty color so that kind of dictated some of my color choices in here and then um, I kind of wanted to capture a little bit of that blue from the autumn sky and um, but dulled down slightly not blue blue so um, that's what I did here so um, obviously I made the wings tutorial at the end of this flip through this is a little faux bezel that I made it is it it could actually probably be soldered but I don't think I would because of the materials I used to do this um, I, um, but I just wanted the copper tape to give that feeling and I'm hoping I use copper wire throughout this I'm hoping that over time it will actually patina up and vertigree and get that sort of greeny look to it that's what I'm hoping so encapsulated in here you see the little crawdad there's a couple of the little white snail shells and then I filled in with some fiber and some tiny stone beads and some wooden beads and the word exploring. I'm not sure if I'm showing that good. It's just layered up with some random bits of fabric and I did add this from my stash because I only had one of the rusty circles and you'll see circles and these stitch lines as sort of a running theme throughout this book. And so this is just a little memory of our trip. I used um, 
brown wrapping paper like you wrap packages in to mail a kind of a thick heavy one and kind of crinkled it to give it sort of a crinkly effect and here is the first page and these are stones that I found in the creek and this is a really pretty patterned leaf and I just thought it was really pretty it was just floating on the water and I kind of encapsulated each memory with sort of a little haiku for each one so you know kept this really a collage journal that captures the memories and kind of a little bit of um, text to um, allude to that here's the next page and I found a gray heron feather this was my find for this page again collage stitch um, this is just a little this is not supposed to represent a heron these were just some little birds that I had done a bunch of these on paper and so I just tore it out to represent a bird not necessarily a heron um, here are the other pair of wings and I preserved those under some mica and I added the copper circle here is also another little um, shell that I found and these were these were both at resting at the edge of the water together when I got those so <clears throat> excuse me this leaf I just I'm still every time I look at it I'm just stunned by it. the patterning on that leaf and that is all natural it was just laying in the creek floating along and it floated past me and I just ha I had to have that leaf the pattern was amazing and then here is the little lid that I found in the um, fire pit and there's another stone from the creek and there was a little squirrel little tiny gray squirrel and he was his body was really tiny but he had a huge tail and he was running up and down the tree and dropping nuts and so I used this vintage image from an 1800s book to um, duplicate my little squirrel friend with his little acorns so there he is then this is the last pa oops the last page in the book and this this one represents the night we sat by the campfire and there were night birds calling there's another stone from the creek and um, that is the end of the book it's just a very simple book then on the inside back here I just um, referenced the date the creek you know where we were and a signature and so that's how I might use some of my nature finds in my work so now we're gonna skip on over to the tutorial and I hope you enjoy it okay here's what we're gonna need for this project you are going to need some white tissue paper and the kind of tissue paper does matter um, this is a really cheap tissue that is matte on both sides not the gift wrap tissue that you get that is shiny on one side and then flat on the other it needs to be matte on both sides some white tissue paper you are going to need some tweezers you're going to need a couple of tools, um, a wire cutter, this is a flat nose plier, and these are round pliers that you make like bales and things like that with in jewelry making. You're going to need some adhesive. Um, I'm using matte gel medium. You will need some glossy accents, or you can use Mod Podge for this. Um, you're going to need some wire. I am using an 18 gauge bronze wire. You can use whatever color you want. I find that somewhere between 18 and 20 gauge is the best kind of gauge to because this is a little fiddly to work with so somewhere between an 18 and a 20 gauge um, the 20 is going to be a little bit thinner than this for what I think I'm going to use this one for I'm going with the 18 I've got a couple of accent beads in here 
Um, make sure your wire will go through your beads. You may have to kind of adjust your gauge or your beads. And you are going to need a wing. Now, disclaimer, I do not capture, kill anything for these projects. These wings are all found wings. Spring and summer, birds eat the body of the thing and the wings are found on the ground, especially around my mimosa tree is where I find a lot of them. And or out on nature walks like finding the one for this book. So that's where these wings came from. So we're gonna choose a wing and I've already got one picked out in here. I'm gonna use this pale Luna wing here. To me carefully. Let's see if I can get around this one to get that one. There we go. And there's my wing. I'm just gonna sit it on top of there. And you can do cicada wings. Um, I will tell you one thing. Don't try doing this in resin. I don't know what it is. It has something to do with the little fur on the wings. It will just turn the wing dark and ugly. It will not be pretty at all. So we don't need any of these wire things right here on this first step. We're just gonna need a little piece of tissue paper. A little bit bigger than our wing because we want some extra to work with. And you do need something non-stick. I've got a non-stick mat, but you could use saran wrap or wax paper, something that this won't stick to because this is thin, the glue goes through it, you know, that kind of thing. So we're just gonna take some matte medium. You could use tacky glue, white glue. This is just what I happen to have on the desk. So I'm gonna use, you know, you could use Elmer's glue. That's fine. Just a white, a white clear drying glue. Let me rephrase that. We want a white clear drying glue. And I'm just, you know, tissue paper gets kind of wonky. I want to kind of not make it curly or anything like that. And then I'm just going to take my wing and make sure I'm putting, oops, the side up that I want prominent. I think I want that side right there. And I'm just going to take my tweezer and kind of tap that into that glue. Okay, and then I'm going to take this and kind of touch gently because you can tear these wings so easily. I'm just barely touching down with a little bit of glue to make sure that the edges of the wing are kind of sealed down. Okay, now I'm going to put this aside and let it completely dry. And once it's dry, we'll come back and do the next step. So I'll see you when this is dry. Okay, um, this is dry now. And it's still really delicate, so we want to be kind of careful. And like I said, you can use, this is a 20 gauge wire, which is, I think is what I must have used on here. This is the 18 gauge. It's a little thicker. And I thought I wanted a thicker look, but after looking at it, I'm like, mm, no, I think I want the 20 gauge. So I'm backtracking on, you know, but I did say 18 or 20. So that's what we need. We need some wire. And uh, you're just going to kind of, I would start with a longer piece just because, um, you know, we're going to kind of gauge about how much it's going to take for that. I'm going to say, I'm just going to say, you, you'll have some waste, but do about 12 inches. I mean, it probably didn't even take that much, but once you start wrapping and everything, I would do about 12 inches of wire just to be, that save yourself some frustration. You'd rather have waste than not enough, and then it be like, you know, you're just irritated about the whole project. So... What I'm going to do is kind of straighten my wire out a little bit. And this is the vintage brand natural brass. Um, this is the bronze color of it. Um, you don't have to use any specific wire. Now, this one here was um, 
the wire that's colored so it's not going to tarnish but this is real copper wire on this one so eventually I'm hoping you can see that where the the medium touched it right there there's a little tiny bit of green I'm hoping that that'll vertigree over time that that'll naturally tarnish over time so I didn't look, treat that or anything um, you know just be aware that your wire can do that okay so I'm gonna kind of make a shape and I'm just gonna work around leave yourself a little tail at the end and I'm gonna kind of start taking my wire and just on the outline of my wing I'm just gonna hold it in place and I'm kind of gonna bend it and you don't have to go right up to it you can leave it a little bit you know around it this wire is pretty dead soft you should be able to bend it really well bend it kind of into your shape okay like that see how I've kind of shaped that around my wing I'm gonna kind of hold whoops I let go of it I'm gonna kind of hold it in place I hope my head is not in here even, you know it's kind of hard to look up and see if your head's in there I'm gonna kind of hold it in place maybe let me pick it up and do it because I can kind of hold it in place better if I'm doing that about there okay I'm gonna hold that and I'm gonna take this little tip end wire and I'm gonna wrap it around about three times oops that last one didn't get very tight that's because I have bad hands and just didn't get very tight okay I'm gonna kind of do that now I'm going to make sure I didn't distort this any in that wrapping. I'm going to trim that little end off with this clip, wire clip. And I'm kind of going to take my plier and kind of work that where that's kind of a smooth, you know, little area there. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my wing and make sure everything looks good here that it's pretty flat and it looks pretty flat and here I'm going to use some tacky glue you could still use your matte gel medium you could even use the glossy accent to glue that but I just like the tacky glue I'm not sure why I just do um, but just glue you want to glue that on Let my should I have my glue upside down and I don't and so whatever's going to be the back of my wire, I'm going to bend that out just a little bit. Let's see. Nope, that's the back of my wire. Okay, that, that way fits best. I'm going to run a bead of glue all the way around this wire. Well, I am if my glue works. <laughs> of course, if you're doing a video, everything is going to go wrong see if that does it if not oh there it goes and if you're wondering about this bottle this does have tacky glue in it this is a sugar bell icing bottle ah, thinner pen that one didn't go all the way in I need to clean the tip I haven't cleaned it in a few days after using it a few times you need to take it off and wash the tip really well see there's a lot of gunk in there keeping my glue from coming out there we go okay we're gonna get a little bead of glue anyway what I was telling you about the bottle this is a sugar bell icing bottle you can get these I got these on Amazon I do believe that they're sold wherever cake decorating supplies are because these are for icing and if you have bad hands these are so soft make sure you get a little bit here on this little edge don't worry about that we can clean some of it up but these bottles work good I put my glue over into these bottles and they don't dry out they have the silicone stopper on top and it is so much easier for my hands now if there's any big blobs of glue you might want to get those off just kind of going around that outside edge a little bit now I'm gonna put this down over my wing gently and make sure I've got a paper towel here to the side 
I'm going to kind of press that down a little bit to make sure that any extra glue that needs to will come up. I'm going to turn this over and on the back I'm going to just with my finger burnish around that edge to make sure that I have good contact with all that glue. And we do. Okay. Very good contact because I don't want anything running out of this. So I'm going to make sure we have some good contact. I'm going to dab up any little excess glue that is squished out. And then I'm going to take my, for my first coat of the Glossy Accents, and don't shake this stuff. <laughs> I got this at Amazon, but I think Hobby Lobby, some other, this is from Ranger. Um, it's a Ranger product. Like I said, you can use Mod Podge. I've only done this with Mod Podge and Glossy Accents, so I don't know how it would do if you just use glue. If you want to, try it and see what happens. But I like that this does leave a shiny um, coat to it. So you don't want to shake this. You want to get it upside down, let it get all into the tip, and get it started before, so you don't let air in. Let's see, maybe this one needs a needle in it too. Oh goodness. We're just batting a thousand here today, aren't we? Okay. You want to get it started. Okay, I got it started off of here. I'm not, don't get let up on squeezing once you start this. You want to go, I like to go around the edge of the wire. That way you don't get air bubbles. Um, and if you get air bubbles, you can take a, a like a straight pen and, you know, sit and work the bubbles out. But I like to keep a gentle, consistent pressure on it where I'm getting a consistent flow out of here. And I'm holding it a little above the wing. You don't really want to get it, you know, drag it too much on the wing so you don't disturb those little... I don't know what they are. I'm going to call them little butterfly fibers. But, uh, well, or moth fibers. You know the little, there's a term for those little hairs or whatever they are on them. And I'm just keeping a consistent pressure and I'm going to fill this whole thing in. And you can move some of this around that you've already, this is self-leveling. It's going to level out. Okay. I did let up then because I could see that I'm not getting all the way to my wire. I'm going to use the tip just to push this to the wire. I do want it to touch that wire all the way around. I want to make sure my edges are sealed up. And then I'll start it again off the, the thing so that I've got the same pressure just a little bit. And then I'll continue filling in. And you can kind of rub, just be careful not to rub the wing. But as you're putting this on here, you can move it. And I'm moving it away from the edge to the center of the wing. And this is the stage that once it's completely filled in, and you've gotten this like you want it, and be careful moving it around. If you lift your tip, you're going to get a bubble. You know, it's kind of one of those weird things. You just kind of, kind of got to work with it. And I've almost got this filled in. Okay, I did get some bubbles right there at the end. So I'm going to wipe this tip off and cap it. And I'm going to take that little pen I had. And I'm going to kind of lift it up so you can see the bubbles. I don't know if you can see them, but right here in this area, there are some tiny bubbles. So I'm going to kind of take my pen and just gently pop those bubbles. Now, um, if you were using resin, you could use heat for the bubbles. You cannot do that on that. That will scorch this glue and it will be terrible. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Keep working it until I can work those bubbles up to the surface, hopefully. 
I may have a few bubbles right there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them all. They're teeny tiny. It's a little collection of tiny bubbles. Okay, I may let that sit for a second and see how that looks. I can still see one there. There are some in here. I don't think I'm going to be able to get all these out, but they're so small. Um, but if you're patient enough, you can. Can you tell I'm short on patience? All right, those are the ones that are left are so minute, they are not going to matter. Okay, now at this stage, if you wanted to add some glitter, I would suggest using a, an extra fine glitter. This is some Recollections glitter. This came from Michael's, I believe. And this one's called Snow. And you want to make sure that it is... Um, like this one, I think I put an iridescent clear. Yeah, this one's iridescent. This one's just a clear glitter, and it's extra fine. And you just want to get up here and pinch and just a little, don't cover it in glitter because it will obscure your wing. You want to get like a little pinch and just dust it across there, you know, like a little fine sugar or something. You would do that at this stage. I'm... Um, not going to do that at this stage. I don't want this one shiny. I mean, I don't want it glittery. I do want it shiny, but not glittery. So I will have to let this dry. This takes quite a while to dry. Um, let me see if it says on the bottle how long it takes. Um, 15 to 60 minutes. And that also depends on your thickness, on how thick you've got this. So I'll let this sit a few hours and then come back, but it'll probably be, I'll probably go on to another project, come back to it tomorrow. But we're just going to let this sit and let it cure, and then we'll um, complete it. So I will be back when that step is done. Okay, my little wing is dry. Lift it up so you can kind of see it. You can see all the detail of the wing. So now I'm going to um, take some scissors or a craft knife. I am this time going to put this down. I cut through my mat a while ago. Um, I don't know what I was doing. I wasn't paying attention at all. I'm going to use an X-Acto knife, a little craft knife. And I'm going to, well, let's see. How am I going to hold this? This time I think I can do this. I'm just going to go as close as I can to that little edge and holding my blade against the wire I'm going to trim all the excess away okay blade in here. It seems like it's dragging a little bit. Don't worry if you have a little bit left on the edges. You can sand those away with either an emery board or a piece of sandpaper um, or a sanding block or something like that. So don't worry if you have that little bit. Okay. Uh, mine came off pretty good, actually. I don't feel like I need to. And if you do sand it, be very careful. And sand towards yourself just a little bit. Just enough to get that edge of paper off. That tiny little edge that, sh if you have any, that's, you know, that needs it. And do it very gently because you don't want to lose that bond. Okay, now the back of it looks like this, and it's not super pretty. So you're going to follow that same process that we did a while ago, getting the, um, put that up so I don't wound myself, getting your um, glossy accents, turning it upside down, getting it started, and you're going to cover the whole back side, and then you're going to let it dry again. So I'm going to get mine started where I've got 
any air out of that tube and I'm going to go along the edge and this time I can rub it a little more liberally because I'm not I don't have that delicate wing that is covered by the tissue paper and what happens is once you get this glossy accents on here and this gets wet it literally makes the tissue paper disappear and you can you will be able to see the back of the swing once you get it done. So you're going to follow that same little process of getting a layer on, steady pressure, not letting up. Try not to stir it around too much because that's how I got bubbles in mine. I did get a little bit of bubble in mine, but it wasn't enough to matter. And this stuff does its self-leveling. I can actually see a little part where one of my edges of my paper is not connecting well with the wire. So I will have a little, little tiny repair area, it looks like. But what I'm thinking I can do is probably put that little bit of glossy accents there and use this tip and press it down and I think it'll just glue it right back on there because I had a little a lift it's just a little bit of a lift and you kind of have to move this back and forth a little bit to see if there's any like I have a, a spot right there that doesn't have any a couple of spots here that don't but I want to make sure that I get all that area covered okay I think that's good I may need my pen again I see a bubble there and there and then you can just poke until you bring those to the surface. Let's see. I need to bring some of that. I've got a little area there. If you get it in good light, you can kind of move it back and forth and tell if everything's covered. Okay. I think... Look again, hold it up where I can see. I think I'm covered pretty well. And I'm just going to go around the edge to make sure there's nothing loose. Okay, so now I'm going to again, okay, now from this angle I can see a couple bubbles. Um, I'm going to go back in, let this completely dry. Once it is completely dry, I'll come back and we'll do we'll add the beads and the wire wrapping and we will have oh oh my goodness I don't know if that caught on camera there is a big red wasp in here he just landed in front of me and flew over my head okay break <laughs> I'll see you when this is dry <laughs> okay my little wing is dry on both sides here's what whoops Let's see, try to turn it that way, that way. This side still, I think, needs to clarify a little bit longer. Um, I'm not going to, after it's completely dry, and I would let it a good 24 hours go, you can then file a little bit on this edge. I've got just a tiny bit of paper. Or you can do this little trick that matches your um, wire. If you kind of want to get rid of that edge, I've got some coffee colored Ranger ink and I can kind of go over that little, just like when you're doing your stuff for your um, journal making or whatever, you're getting rid of that white edge. You can do that and that just gets that white edge completely gone. I can't see it anymore. So that's just a little tip. So now we want to finish this off so it'll be a charm of some sort. And I've got uh, some glass beads here. I've got a little bronze one. And then I have this really pretty one that's all the colors of the wing that I thought was really pretty. And I'm going to put another bronze one on there. There we go. That's all I'm going to put on mine. I'm just going to put, you know, that. Now I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to leave a little bit of a space. Let's see, I want kind of a larger 
loop. I'm going to go about right there, about not quite halfway, but about halfway in. And you can see there's a little space between my plier and that bead, okay? I'm going to take this wire, I'm bending it away from me, and around that loop. So we've got a shape like this, okay? Then I'm going to pull my plier out and put it on this side where I can see this wire. And I'm going to make sure I get in the right place. I'm going to start wrapping this wire back down toward that bead, pulling tightly. I'm only going to get two wraps. Well, I might get three. Let's see. I don't think I'm going to get more than two. Yeah, maybe three. Depends on how much space you leave, but you should be able to get two or three wraps. That's all I'm going to get out of mine. Then I'm going to cut this off with my clippers. I'm going to take, don't worry about that, that's all crooked, we're not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to kind of bend that in, pull that together, and then you can put your you can straighten a little bit with your straighten. Oh, that straightened it pretty out. I don't guess I need to use those others. Or if you're if it's lopsided, you can kind of bend it, you know, by putting that inside there. But now I have a pretty, let's see. I want that bent a little bit that way. I mean, oops. I bend mine just a little bit more. That way. There. Now I feel like that's, oh, I keep catching on something, catching my sweater on something. But there we have a charm that is made out of the wing. And this side still needs to dry some more um, on the back of mine, but um, you will have a beautiful wing charm. You can make these into earrings, like I said, a pendant, book jewelry, whatever you need a charm for. And it's a way of just capturing nature. I hope you have enjoyed this little tutorial. And um, thank you for joining me. And I will see you around the studio.